What do Israelis think about Jesus and Christianity? Today I'm going to talk about a very sensitive and interesting topic. Before I start, I would just like to say that most people who talk about this topic on YouTube have an agenda. I'm taking a step back here and just trying to outline the Israeli view on this subject. To prove that I don't have any secret agenda, I will tell you about my own personal beliefs. So what do Israelis think about Jesus and Christianity? In short, Israelis don't think too much about Jesus. And as far as I see it, there are three reasons for it. A technical one, a historical one, and one that concerns a basic concept of Judaism that most people are not aware of. I will start with the technical one. I named this video what Israelis think and not what Jews think, although I will be talking about Israeli Jews here, because there are differences between Israeli Jews and the diaspora Jews. The main one being that in the diaspora, Jews make up a minority in countries that have Christian traditions. So Jews there know what Christmas is, Easter, they see churches around them, they are confronted with it constantly. In Israel, Jews make up the majority and Christmas market are something you mostly see on Netflix. The average Israeli doesn't see churches and doesn't know too much about Jesus. At school, we don't learn anything about Jesus or the New Testament and I will be getting um, to that in a minute. The historical, or perhaps I should say chronological reason, is that Jews were here first, before Christianity, so the Jewish Bible doesn't deal with it. If all Jews and everything connected to Judaism were to disappear tomorrow, then Christianity would have a big problem, as Jesus himself was Jewish, his disciples were Jewish, and Christianity is based on Judaism. Jesus had 12 disciples because there are 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus was born in Bethlehem because King David was born in Bethlehem. Jesus was on Mount Carantal for 40 days, which symbolizes the 40 years of the Jews in the desert and so on. Christianity needs Judaism, but Judaism existed many years before Christianity and can easily go on without it. The third reason is that Judaism doesn't want to rule the world. Christianity wants the whole world to believe in Jesus. This is why missionaries get sent all over the world to spread the word of Jesus. Judaism is different. Jews just want to be left alone. If you want to join, if you want to convert, then great, you are welcome. But it is a very long process. I find it interesting that throughout the generations, Jews have been accused of wanting to conquer the world and control it but it is actually those accusing the Jews of it who want to control the world themselves. Jews just want to practice their religion freely. So Israelis don't think about Christianity too often, but when they do, what do they think? The first impression, and I won't sugarcoat it, is negative. Christianity has shed the blood of Jews more than any other religion. Anti-Jewish laws came in the moment Christianity became the religion of the Roman Empire. Jews were blamed for spreading diseases, for killing children, and of course for killing Jesus. The church was responsible for the worst blood libel against the Jews, not for one period in Jewish Christian history, but for most of it. Ten years ago, I lived with an Amish family for a, for a few months. It was one of the best experiences of my life. And the mother there asked me what Israelis think about Christians, and I told her that they have a negative view because of 2,000 years of persecution. And then she said, it wasn't the Christians that persecuted the Jews, it was the Catholic and the Protestant. They are not Christians. I just love this answer. And this leads us to another thing you need to know. For most Israelis, Jesus, Christianity, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, it is all one and the same thing. But it is not just the persecution. There are basic things to understand here. Let's say that you start a new institution. I don't know, a pub. Let's call it Orange Pub. And it is going well, not brilliantly, but well enough. This pub has a fantastic new concept that changes local society. Now, let's say that one of the workers is not happy about something and opens a new pub right next to it, a bigger one, and calls it New Orange Pub. How would you feel about that? I guess you get the metaphor. 
I chose pub as it is short for public house and the word synagogue is a word in Greek that means gathering. The word synagogue in Hebrew, Bet Knesset, also means public house. So Jews don't really appreciate the idea that Christians are here to replace them with a new idea, with a new testament. And the new idea itself is very odd to Jews. The main idea in Christianity is that Jesus is the son of God. But for Jews, the idea that God had a son is an idea that they can't accept or even begin to understand. In Judaism, the idea that God is one, or perhaps I should say the oneness of God, is so inherent that even for Jews who aren't at all religious, the idea that God had a son who was also God himself and that he died for the sins of humanity is just unacceptable. There is a story, uh, a joke, I'm almost sure that I read it in a Sigmund Freud book called Moses, that there is an assimilated Jewish family somewhere in Germany. It isn't at all religious. And then one day the father picks his son up from school and asks him, what did you learn today? And the son says, uh, we learned about the Holy Trinity. The father is furious. He grabs his son's head and say, listen to me and listen good. There is only one God and we don't believe in him. And this story brings me to my first memory of visiting a church. We were on a family trip to France, Holland, and Belgium, and I can remember entering a big dark church. I think it was in France. And I saw Jesus on the cross, suffering, nails through his hands and feet, and the deep cut at the side of his body and the blood. And I, I was scared. I thought to myself, these Christians are evil and, and dark. How can a dying, suffering man be their symbol. Only when I started learning to become a tour guide did I first learn about Christianity and see the bigger picture and understand that this idea of sacrifice has very deep roots in Judaism. In school, we don't learn anything about Jesus and Christianity. And I think that for most Israelis, and I know that some of you will find this strange, Jesus' best known miracle was walking on the water in the Sea of Galilee. When I ask the graphic design I work with to make an icon of Jesus, that's the first thing she did. About four weeks ago, I wrote a post saying I was going to talk about this topic and ask if you have any questions. I'm going to answer some of them, but first there are a couple of things I would like to say. This video is a bit clickbaity. I don't really know what Israelis think about Jesus and Christianity. But no one is going to click on a video with a title, Oren talks about what he thinks Israelis think about Jesus. There is no official information about it, and everything I'm saying here is being said to the best of my knowledge. If you don't like what I'm saying, you can just go, I don't like what he's saying, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and that is fine with me. You can, you can also say, I really like what he's saying, but he doesn't know what he's talking about, and that is also okay. About 20% of the questions I received were about Messianic Jews, which is really interesting. On YouTube, you can find really big channels for and about Messianic Jews and Jews for Jesus. Guys, most Israelis have never met or heard about Messianic Jews. They are a tiny group in Israel and they try to keep a low profile. For most Israelis, Messianic Jews sounds like an oxymoron. Um, as if someone were to come to you and say, I'm a Muslim Christian. If you believe in Jesus, then you are a Christian and not Jewish. This is the opinion of the average Israeli on the street. But is it right? There are answers provided by the Jewish halacha, Jewish religious laws, and the rules of the state of Israel. I will start with the Jewish rule. If you were born to a Jewish mother, you are Jewish. It doesn't matter what you believe or if you believe. If you were born to a Jewish mother, you are Jewish. The State of Israel added, to be recognized as a Jew, you need to be born to a Jewish mother and not be a member of any other religion. You might be asking, what does a member of any other religion mean? And this is where the court decides. If you convert to Christianity, become a member of the Catholic Church and baptize your children, you are a member of a different religion. If you are a Jew who believes in Jesus, but um, doesn't go to church, I, I don't know. I hope that in the next few months I will be going to Haifa and making a video about the story of the brother Daniel. It is a very interesting story. 
I will say that many religious Israelis, especially American religious Jews, flip out when they hear the term Messianic Jews. 99% of Jews have no problem with people saying that they are Christians who believe in Jesus, um, because then it is clear. But if you believe in Jesus and if your mother is not Jewish, then don't say that you are Jewish. And for many religious Jews, Messianic Jews are seen as traitors um, from within. Oh yes, I'm Jewish. Let's open the Bible. Hmm, Isaiah 53. Interesting. Now, I won't go there to this religious discussion. There are two YouTube channels dedicated to this topic, one for Israel and Rabbi Tuvia Zinger. The links will be below. I was asked about my personal beliefs and I will provide an answer. But first, please give this video a like. That way, if you don't like my answer, I still have your like. I am Jewish. Do I believe Jesus existed? Yes. Do I believe that his teachings were relevant 2,000 years ago? Yes. Do I believe that his teachings are relevant today? Yes. Do I believe that he is God? No. Do I believe that Jesus is the Messiah? No. I gave a lot of thought to whether I should answer this question. First, because I'm not sure that my personal beliefs are relevant to this video, but I understand your curiosity. And the second thing is that I'm a tour guide a Jewish tour guide who mostly speaks to Christian audiences. How do I put it all together? This question bothered me when I was doing the guiding course and I asked my teachers about it. One said that she talks about the historical Jesus that she believed existed. And the other one said, when I talk about it, I believe it. At the time, I didn't understand what she meant, but now as a guide, I get it. Once you are telling the story, you are in the story. Another point to make is that our job as guides is not to be priests. We are not religious leaders, but rather it is our job to connect the traveler to the places and events that took place in a given location. It makes perfect sense for a Jew to talk about Jesus, saying as Jesus and his environment were Jewish. I hope that it all makes sense. I don't usually talk about these topics with groups. I have to say that it is much easier um, to talk about these sensitive topics in a video. You think that I'm talking to you, but it is not true. Um, le le let me show you. I'm actually, I'm actually talking to a swing and to a slide. Sometimes it is easier to talk to a camera um, in an empty playground than to a group of people. The next question is, are there open-minded enough to read the New Testament and see if it proves to be true? A second question, if I may, is if not, then why? Most Jews do not read the New Testament, just as most Christians do not read the Quran and other books that are holy for other religion. Another question that had many variation is, why don't Jews believe that Jesus is the Messiah? There are certain things that need to happen when the Messiah comes. You will hear different ideas, but I will sum up the main ones. The temple will be rebuilt, there will be world peace, and all Jews will come together in the land of Israel. Since Jesus didn't fulfill this criteria, he is not the Messiah the Jews are waiting for. Where do Israelis get information about Christianity? From American missionaries, from talking to Orthodox Catholic people, living in Jerusalem from TV, and is, it, is the average Israeli even interested in Christianity? As I said in the beginning, Israelis are not interested in Christianity. It is almost a non-issue in Israel. As for missionaries, I will say that Jews don't want Christians to show them the light and try to convert them to Christianity, not with carrots or sticks, and by the way, carrots are not allowed in Israel. I mean, all vegetables are allowed in Israel. Israel is a democracy, but it is illegal in Israel to promise material goods to someone on the condition that he or she converts. In Hebrew, we don't say convert to Christianity, but lehit natser, which means like Christianized. And this word has very negative historical connotations. Next question. How do um, Israelis feel about secular Gentiles who have abandoned um, the churches they grew up in? 
Would they like us to come and see Israel as secular tourists? Here I'm talking about what Israelis think about Jesus, but as for you as tourists, Israelis really don't care if you are Protestant, Catholic, secular, Muslim. Your nationality, profession, um, where you come from, all of that is much more interesting than your personal beliefs. I guarantee no Israelis will say to you, oh, you are from London, so you are part of the Church of England and you believe in Jesus. No, you can visit all the religious sites, Jewish, Muslim, um, Christian, from a totally secular or purely historical or artistic perspective. And as, as the chief rabbi of Nirvana said, come as you are, but two important side notes. A lot of tourists join groups that don't fit in with their personal beliefs. Don't join a church tour if you don't know it and see eye to eye um, with them. Israel is different from most countries in the sense that there are so many layers to each place. A Jewish tour in the old city of Jerusalem is very different to a Catholic tour or an evangelical tour or a general tour or a Muslim tour. The second point is that for many years the Israel Ministry of Tourism was very lazy and only sold Israel as a destination for Holy Land tour groups. In the last few years, things have started to change for the better and the Ministry of Tourism has started to appeal to other audiences, including independent travelers, city tours, desert tourists. I've put a lot of thought into making this video. Sometimes I ask myself, why do I need it? Why I have to enter all these minefields? There are a thousand other videos I could have made. I don't have a clear answer to that, but once I read your comments, I almost always have the nice feeling that I did the right thing by talking about these sensitive issues. When I shoot videos in Jerusalem, I often get recognized, and on my last few visits to Jerusalem, I also got recognized by some Orthodox Jews who I would never have guessed would watch my videos. And I asked them if it bothered them that lots of my videos are about Jesus and churches and told them that I was planning to make this video. And all of them said that they would like to see more videos about Jewish sites, but they still enjoy learning about Jesus and churches, even though they don't believe in Jesus. A religious American Jewish girl told me that she shares more values with Christians in the US than with secular Jews over there. And a modern Orthodox lady I met while filming in Machne Yehuda told me that she enjoys learning about Jesus, although she doesn't believe that he's the Messiah. After all, she said, he's the most popular Jew in the world. So maybe that's another way to look at it. This video can be seen as a video about what Jews think about the most renowned Jew in the world and his followers. I am a very big believer in Jewish Christian values. This is a major part of Western society. And today, the relationship between Jews and Christians um, has come a very long way. It is in a good place and hopefully will only get better. Uh, that's it. I hope you like this video. If you have questions, then please write them below and maybe I will do a follow-up video. Thank you guys for buying me beers and for your support now that the skies have closed again. It is very much appreciated. See you um, in the next video. Yalla bye.